I asked him for $30,000 and I thought I was going to die. Hi, this is Peter Heller and I'm here today with another episode of Outrageous Fortune where fundraisers and others tell their most outrageous fundraising stories. I'm here today with Mika Vandersall, who's gonna join us and tell some of her stories. Hi, Mika. Hi, Peter. How are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm great. Do you wanna tell our audience something about yourself? You and I have worked together for three or four years already. Yeah. Amazing how fast that goes. I am a fundraiser also and work with faith communities and I'm a pastor. Do you have an outrageous fortune story for us? I've been thinking a lot about this, and I thought maybe I'd tell you the story of making my first big ask. Time for your star turn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran a nonprofit before I got into the whole consulting situation. And as so many people do who enter into nonprofit work, um, didn't really know what I was doing. I had a lot of passion and had a lot of love and not a lot of skills. Mm. And then we have to like, learn the skills. So got to a point in that work that, that we were having a really hard time funding the work that we were doing. It was really valuable and really changing people's hearts and minds and really walking alongside people in really beautiful ways. But the fundraising was exhausting for me and I was getting to a point of like a breaking point of being able to continue because it was just more than I could handle. What was the um, nonprofit about? We worked for LGBTQ people in the Presbyterian Church um, to try and change homophobic policies in the church. Great. So, yeah, so that's what we were doing. I, I would imagine that you started the nonprofit because of your passion about that issue, not right. because you wanted to go raise money. Correct. Right. And money was like the necessary evil, not the... Uh, Beloved friend. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly, which I've learned it can be. Yes. Uh, but that took some time. Yeah, so what happened? So I had a donor who came to me and said that he really believed in my work, that it's clear I didn't really know what I was doing, and that he was a businessman who worked in a tall building and made a lot of money, and he wanted to give it to me. That's how he described himself? That's, that is basically how he described himself, yes. <laughs> okay. that, I mean, it was like that blunt. Yeah. And that I needed to come up with what I needed to ask him for it. That he wasn't going to just give me a chunk of cash, but that I needed to figure out what it was that I needed so that I could take that money and make it an investment in my leadership and in the organization. Wow. Okay. So I spent the next like two weeks freaking out and trying to figure out what it was that I was going to ask for and also realizing that I had to ask, which I was not excited to do. Without revealing anything, did, was this somebody you knew or did he just kind of show up out I, of nowhere? And I knew him. I didn't know him super well. He had been a somewhat lower level donor. He had given some, some money in the past, but I never had the guts to actually just like forthright ask him. We just, we knew of each other and he was a member of a Presbyterian church. So I, ah. yeah, exactly. So I, um, I actually found a consultant that I wanted to work with because I knew that I, his challenge was so that he, the money could duplicate. Not that, not that I could just sink it into a program and be done with it and yeah. never ask, you know, and then have to come back and ask him for the same thing yeah. again. So I had met a fundraising consultant who I knew I wanted to work with and knew that I, that the ask was going to be to hire that person to teach me what I needed to know. Um, so I wrote budgets out and I think through spreadsheets and I did a whole bunch of stuff in that way. And I got a quote from him and began talking to members of my board. If I raised the money, would they be on board? with okay. spending it in this way yeah. and with um, with them joining me in that process because it's it's about it's not only about me as a fundraiser it's about the board yeah. stepping up as well and i i knew that much at least i mean it's just it's somewhat outrageous right like that's like when do you ever get a donor that comes to you and says i want to give you money all you have to do is figure out what you want it for and then come and ask me. Yeah, it's a pretty... Like, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Right? Awesome and unusual. Yeah, exactly. So I brought my treasurer with me and we did indeed go to a big fancy pants office building with, you know, when you go way up high in Manhattan, yeah. extraordinary views of the rivers and all that kind of thing. And we crept up to the whatever kajillionth floor 
in an elevator that felt like it took like way too long and no time at all. And I was just sweating out of every pore of my body. Wow. And we got there and I asked him for $30,000 and I thought I was going to die. I really... Do you remember how the words came out of your mouth? I, I barely do. I like it. It's, it's a, it was a complete... Like out of body experience? Out of body experience. <laughs> I was convinced he was going to be angry at me, even though he had asked me to ask. Yeah. Um, I was convinced that we would no longer be friends. I was convinced that uh, he wasn't going to like what I was asking for. I was convinced I was asking for too much, that I didn't deserve that. I mean, like all of the narrative stuff that I bring my clients through now right. were just, it was pretty remarkable, all that I had to go through to what get that say? out of my mouth. Um, he asked a lot of questions. So I said, this is what I wanted for. This is the research I've done. This is what it's going to allow me to do, so on and so forth. And my treasure just kind of sat there and like, just like, it's like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. It's going to be okay. Calm it's going to be time. okay. Like... <laughs> and then he asked me a bunch of questions and then I went, had to go home and like find out the answers to those questions. And he told me he'd think about it. And then he came back and said that he would give me $15,000. Okay. So he didn't give me 30, but he gave me 15 and 15 was enough to get going. As was a relatively new small nonprofit. Yeah. I just want to point out to our audience that from that story, you're an actual fundraising consultant today. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It is. How'd that so, ever happen? Well, because you've learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. gotten the, the courage. Yes, you're correct. I just help people with their own, with yeah. their own terror. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's but a at great... that moment, I knew that I, like, if I got so nervous, you know when you're so nervous that you have some work to do somehow or another that like that this that this action shouldn't strike such fear and dread inside of me and and he was right I had to live into my leadership and I had to figure out how to do that and that meant doing my work so that's what's gotten me to the you know yeah, that donation that's, that's but then fabulous. like the the instigation that he gave me the the way that he basically commanded me to figure it out right would have been much different if he's like at that first lunch he was like i want to support you here's a fifteen thousand dollar check right? right you wouldn't have gone through that whole process exactly so he kind of did you a favor he did me a huge favor yeah did me a huge favor yeah that's yeah. a great story yeah yeah, yeah. thank you yeah, thank um, you so uh before we finish up how about we look at um i have over here um this uh what i've got it's called the fundraiser's credo mm -hmm. fundraiser's credo but I've changed it, I've crossed out the D, so it's the fun raiser's credo. Okay. I've got a number of things that are on here. You know, someday it'll be a historic document. Absolutely. Like, the, f how do we keep fundraising and have a credo? Something around, like, you'll, we have really wacky stories to tell. Not all stories that we can tell on The Outrageous Fortune. Right. But stories that we can tell privately over glasses of wine. Um, with trusted colleagues. So like weird stuff happens when, when you raise money and right. we see all of humanity in doing so. And um, that's a really good point. Something about like it, something about the, the just the, the weird stuff that happens. Yeah. Could we say um, tell wacky stories? Sure. Like I have a friend who courted a donor forever and ever and ever and she could not get him to sit down so that she could ask. Yeah. And so she ended up being driven to the LIR station somewhere on Long Island. <laughs> and he's half deaf and he's driving her there and his wife is in the front seat. And she asks him for $50,000 from the back seat of his car while driving to the Long Island Railroad. Because that like, was like the only Because that was it. She was like done. She's like, I, I have, you know, I've courted him. I've done everything I can do. I've cultivated forever. I need the money. I need him to say yes or no. And she asked him for the best seat of car. Like we wouldn't suggest doing that, but sometimes these are the stories that happen to us. Yeah. Any idea what happened? He gave it to her. <laughs> he didn't say what? I can't hear you. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. I'll have All right. I, I love that. Stories. Tell wacky stories. That's a great addition to the fundraisers credo. Excellent. And I'm here today again with Mika Vandersall, and this is Peter Heller with Outrageous Fortune. Thank you all for joining us, and thank you, Mika. Thank you, Peter. 
Remember to like and subscribe. Get your free major gift tools at hellerfundraisinggroup.com. What's your outrageous story? Write to info at hellerfundraisinggroup.com.